Now that we've introduced the A through Z phonograms, we're ready to begin to learn some of the multi-letter phonograms. The first one that I'll teach you today is K, two-letter K. This says ng. This is E, E double E. When teaching the multi-letter phonograms, it really doesn't matter which order you place them in. In Logic of English Essentials and in Logic of English Foundations and our other curriculums, we've chosen an order that we think just makes sense based on the words that we wanted to teach, but you could teach them in any order that you desire to your students. So I have a question for you. What are the single letter vowels? Take a moment and write them on page 79 of your teacher's training manual. I hope you wrote A, E, I, O, U, and Y. Let's look at these a little closer. Let's first read the first sounds of the vowels. We're going to leave Y off and we'll come back to Y and have a long discussion about the phonogram Y uh, later in the training. But for now, let's read the first uh, sounds of the five vowels. So these say A, E, I, A, A. Do you know what this first sound is called? It's called the short sound, and it's marked like this. Write the short vowels in your training manual on page 79. A, eh, I, A, A. Notice we put a brief over it. Brief, by the way, means short, like brevity. Uh, it's abbreviation. It's the root meaning short. And so a brief is the marking for a short sound. Now let's read the second sounds of these vowels. A, E, I, O, U. The second sounds of these vowels are called the long sounds. And the long sounds are marked with a line like this. Take a moment and write the long sounds for the vowels in the training manual. You'll notice the long sounds of the vowels are also the names of these vowels. So sometimes we'll refer to these as the long sounds. Sometimes we'll refer to these as their names. Now, how many sounds does the vowel, or does this phonogram make? It says a, a, a. So it says three sounds. And we've learned the short sound and the long sound, but the third sound, uh, which is often overlooked, is called the broad sound. Now, broad set vowel sounds can be marked in a variety of ways in dictionaries. And with the logic of English, we've chosen one of the common ways, which is to put two dots over it. So this says a, ah, and it's called the broad vowel sound. How many sounds does a, o, u make? Three. And you'll notice that a is the short sound, o is the long sound, and then u is actually the broad sound. So now we have a name for that third vowel sound and a way to refer to it as we're learning about it. What about this phonogram? It says four sounds, a, u, u, u. You'll notice on the screen that the fourth sound is the broad sound, u, as in put or butcher or pudding. And you'll also notice that there are two long sounds. Now, this might sound tricky, but it's really not that hard. Take a moment and say the sound you, as in the second sound, a, uh, you, so you, and then compare that to u, you, u. What's the same and what's different about these sounds? That's right, they both say u, and with um, the third sound, we drop the ya sound and we just have u. So you and u are related. You can hear this in words such as uh, cute, cute, you hear the long u with the yes sound. And if you contrast that to flute, uh, you don't hear the yes sound, you just hear ooh, flute. This is because if you tried to say flute, it's just your tongue would trip over it. So sometimes we drop the yes sound in a long u sound. So what I like to do is I like to explain to students that u has four sounds, a short sound, a, uh, and two long sounds, u and oo, which are related, and that there's two of them so that it's easier to say in some words, and then a broad sound, u. Uh. With the logic of English, I believe in teaching through discovery. It's really important that students have the opportunity to discover the spelling rules and 
on their own, rather than us just telling them. When we teach through discovery, it engages students with questions, and we provide support for the students so they cannot fail. You know, too often we teach language where we throw the students into the midst of this complex language called English. We don't give them much guidance, and we expect them to figure out the rules and the phonograms on their own. Now, some people do. However, many people never are able to figure out those rules and those phonograms on their own. Rather, it helps when they're taught explicitly how the language works. Now, what I like to do though is to help the students discover it. So it's not just boring where we're t where we're telling them. Rather, we'll teach them the critical thinking skills about how to learn language and how to analyze language, so that maybe they come up with new spelling rules that they discover or patterns, and they have the tools to learn second and third languages. Let's try this with uh, learning the rule about two-letter k. On your screen, you'll see a list of words that end with a two-letter or that have a two-letter k in them. These words are also listed on page 81 of the teacher's training manual. If you take a moment, I would like you to underline the two-letter k as you read the words and then to mark the vowel sound as short, long, or broad and see what you discover. I would encourage you at this point to pause the video and actually take a moment to discover the rule uh, for yourself before um, you turn it back on. All right, well, I hope that your page looks about like this. What you'll have discovered is that two letter k is used only after a single short vowel. And the rule is stated like this. CK is used only after a single vowel, which says it's short sound. What you see on the screen is a sample of the Logic of English spelling rule cards. And we have um, a set of cards available for you to use as you teach your students. On one side is the rule, and on the other side are sample words. And I like to use the sample words to help students to practice the rules where they have to look at the words, read them, and then I can say, well, what rule is this illustrating? So they are able to then uh, distill that information, not just rotely recite it. All right, why can we not use two letter k in words like cheek and creek? That's right, it's saying it's long sound. Also, you'll notice that it has a two letter vowel here. E double E is a, has two letters in that phonogram. If you go later in this, uh, the sample words, you'll notice the word bike and like. Why can't you use two letter k here? It's a single vowel, but once again, it's a long vowel sound. On page 82 of your teacher's training manual, you'll find a few games to practice words which use the two letter k phonogram. And I think it's really a good idea when teaching students a new rule to have them work with the rule within the context of a lot of words. Then when we go to a spelling list, I don't have the spelling list only utilize that rule because then you don't need to use critical thinking skills or, or practice what you've learned in the past. Rather, I'll put in a few words that use that rule, but then words that use all the phonograms and rules that we've learned up to this point as well. Spelling list two. With spelling list two, I will dictate the first five words to you. Then we will take time to talk about the process of spelling dictation and spelling analysis then I would like you to take time to dictate words to someone else. It could be an imaginary student, or you, maybe you have a student who would like to try this process with you. I would like you to notice in your teacher's training manual on page 84, there is the whole spelling list for you. Now, I encourage you when you're doing the dictation process to not look at this list, but rather to only be looking at page 83 where you can write the words. All right, the first word is quick. The quick dog ran away, quick. Let's sound it out together. Qu, i, k. Notice I held up two fingers, so this is going to be two letter k. Why could I use two letter k? Because there's a single short vowel here. Go ahead and write quick, and as you write it, sound it out. All right, now help me to write it and sound it out with me. Qu, i, k. And how will we mark quick? We'll underline the qu and we'll underline the k. Now, many people might think that there's two vowels here, but remember, Q always needs a U 
U is not a vowel here. This is the phonogram qu. And this is two letter k used only after a single short vowel. So we can read it together. Qu, e, k, quick. The second word is string. Tie the string on your finger. String. Let's sound it out together. S, t, r, e, n. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. S, t, r, e, n. And how will we mark it? We'll underline the n. Let's sound it out together. S, t, r, e, n. String. The third word is tree. The big tree is bending in the wind. Tree. Let's sound it out. T, r, e. This is an e double e. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. T, r, e. And how will we mark it? We'll underline the e double e. The fourth word is path. Please stay on the path. Path. P, a, f. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. P, a, f. And how will we mark it? We'll underline the th. The fifth word is truck. The truck is driving on the road. Truck. T, r, a, k. What kind of k? You're right, it's a two letter k. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. T, r, a, k. And how will we mark it? We'll underline the two letter k. Why did we use two letter k? It's only, it's after a single short vowel. Let's read it. T, r, a, k, truck. All right, let's take a few moments and talk about spelling dictation and spelling analysis. This is the process of learning new words uh, in the Logic of English method. You'll notice, first of all, I will read the word to the student, and then I'll use it in a sentence. This way we can clarify which form of the word we're talking about. So let's use the word duck. Duck. The boy is feeding the duck. Then the student should repeat the word and say aloud the number of syllables. Now, when students are learning one syllable words, I tend to not require them to count the syllables, but when we get up to two, three, or four syllable words, it's very important that they tell you how many syllables are in the word. So, duck, one syllable. Then the student should sound the word out aloud. This is the same process that we used in phonemic awareness, where they are segmenting the word into its sounds. So they will say, d, a, k. As the student sounds out the word, then we should clarify which spelling is used if there are mo multiple options for spelling that sound. So for example, in the word duck, I would say use two letter k. The student then writes the word. If the word has more than one syllable, the student should break the word apart into two syllables. I usually have the students put a space between the words, or I'm sorry, I usually have the students put a space between the syllables. Some students might struggle with this concept of putting a space between the syllables within a word. Another idea you could use is to have them write the first syllable in one color, and then when they get to the second syllable, transition to a different color. Uh, so that would be another way to handle that. But there needs to be a visual difference between the syllables. Then they will analyze the word for spelling rules. As teachers, you can use the column that says spelling hints to help you know which spelling rules are in play within this word. So how do we mark the word duck? We underline the k y. It's a multi-letter phonogram. Um, and then we can recite the rule that ck is used only after a single vowel, which says it's short sound. Now, you'll have noticed that I was using finger spelling when I was sounding out words. And so one way you could do that is to hold up fingers for each of the phonograms. And if there's a multi-letter phonogram, you can hold up two or three or four or fingers. Another option, um, since some people struggle and don't have flexibility in their hands, is to tuck your thumbs behind your hands and just use these four fingers to sound out words. Another option, if you find that difficult, would be to uh, just show s students um, when there's a multi-letter phonogram. So for example, if a student was sounding out duck, they'd say d, a, uh, k, and I'd show them two fingers just for the k sound. A third option for you 
um, might be to tap your fingers. D, a, uh, k, and here you tap two. I think this is a little bit harder to see for students, but it can work as well. So these are just a few visual ideas on how you can clue your students um, with the phonograms as they're writing. Now, what I would suggest you do is you pause the video and you dictate the last five words of spelling list two. You can do this aloud as if you have a pretend student or to another fellow teacher. Then when you are done, you can turn the video back on and I will go through the list and you can compare the process to what you did. Welcome back. Let's begin with word six in spelling list two. The sixth word is milk. The baby wants a bottle of milk. Milk. M -i -l -k. This is a tall k. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. M -i -l -k. And let's sound it out. M -i -l -k milk. Why could I not use two letter k here? Because it's before a consonant. This isn't a vowel, so we can't use two letter k in milk. The seventh word is green. My green jacket ripped. Green. Let's sound it out together. G, r, e. This is an e double e. N. Go ahead and write it. As you write it, be sure to sound it out. Then help me to write it. G, er, e, n. Let's sound it out, or how do we mark it? We'll underline the e double e, and then let's sound it out together. G, er, e, n. Green. The eighth word is long. The long string is for the tent. Long. Let's sound it out together. U, a, ng. Go ahead and write it. And then help me to write it. O, A, ng. And how will we mark it? We'll underline the ng. The ninth word is black. Wear black, wear black pants for the party. Black. Let's sound it out. B, O, A, K. Notice I used a two letter K. Go ahead and write it. And then help me to write it. B, O, Ack. And how will we mark it? We'll underline the two letter k. Why did we use two letter k? Because it's after a single short vowel. The tenth word is three. Three dogs slept. Three. Let's send it out. Th er e. This is an e double e. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. Th er e. And how will we mark it? We'll underline the th and the e. Many teachers ask me after teaching their first spelling list how they're going to do this on their own in the classroom. And I always like to take a moment and talk to you about the supports that Logic of English provides for teachers. It's one of the things that's very unique to us. So for example, with the Logic of English Essentials program, and the same thing will be true of Foundations, we provide a tremendous amount of teacher supports. Each of the lessons will teach, tell you exactly which phonograms to teach, which spelling rules to teach. They will give you phonemic awareness or exploring sounds activities that have all been ordered in a logical, sensible way for you. These are marked clearly in the, um, in the manuals. There's also a lot of um, enrichment activities where if a student is struggling, these are clearly marked in blue boxes so that in the Essentials program so that you know that these are optional, but you also don't have to reinvent or invent something if you have a student that needs more practice. When it comes to teaching through discovery, uh, our teacher's manuals provide for you lots of sample words. For example, on the screen, you'll be able to see a sample page from the Essentials training manual or teacher's manual where it's about teaching the two letter um, the rule about two letter k is used only after a single short vowel. The words, the sample words for you to write on the board or to give your students are all there, so you don't have to invent that for yourself. 
Another thing that uh, you'll be encouraged by is our spelling lists have a lot of information built in there for the teachers. There's the, um, the spelling word itself, but also sample sentences so that you don't have to come up with them on your own. The reason they're marked in that way. There's a pronunciation guide on how to pronounce the word. So if, if you're not sure because you're maybe teaching in an EFL setting, there's a pronunciation guide there. There are also spelling hints. So all of the rules and the phonograms that are uh, applied in that word are listed for the teacher so that you can be learning that alongside your students. Finally, the lessons include grammar and punctuation, vocabulary development, dictation, and phrase and sentence level composition as appropriate for the age of the students. In this way, it helps you to provide meaningful practice with these words without you having to come up and figure out how to integrate that into your classrooms or your lessons on your own.